Welcome Nintendo GameCube fans, Jay from Right Sprite is here and in this video I'll be showing you how to get your GameCube video output from looking like this over to looking like this. I'll be covering some recommended goods, an installation process and a setup guide in this video. So don't forget hitting that like and subscribe button is much appreciated. So now let's go. To start things off here, this fella is helping towards getting this job done, and that is the Retro Plus Digital HD adapter for the GameCube. I am aware that these adapters have been out for quite a while, but I finally managed to pick one up, and it is a big game changer for the GameCube. And personally, as a big fan myself, I'm pretty excited about getting the best out of this awesome console, making it more appealing and enjoyable for today's times. I do like the box design and it does state some potential compatible issues, which I'll go in more details later in this video. Inside the box we do have an AR remote and the adapter itself with a HDMI cable as well at the bottom. There's no manual unfortunately included, but hopefully by the end of this video you would have a better understanding anyway. This remote is built with a simple navigation design, any menu, OK and exit button. They're all nice and squishy rubber, not a premium feeling at all, but I'm sure it's enough to get the job done. It's powered by a 3V 2025 disc, a very affordable cheap battery to replace. I really do like the bluey purple transparent style with this rounded built or plastic body with a solid aluminium connection with a full size HDMI output as well is definitely better than that all plastic built one that I've seen going around that needs a mini HDMI converter to connect to HDMI. The price is also a lot better than a lot of his competition out there, especially comparing it to the GCHD that is going for pretty ridiculous price and is even more affordable than the Kaiko is out there at the moment. It would be nice to get my hands to give these a test one day, but of course you will find a purchase link for the Retro Plus in the description box below. I find that it fits in really comfortably to the connection port, but does have a slight wiggle due to its design and length, but that's no biggie. There are two models of the GameCube, the second one did come out late in the life of production, the model Doll 101. This came out with no digital output port just so they can cut costs, so this won't be a compatible with that model. The Doll 101 is not a very popular model, but it's just a worthy mention. But before I go and show you the benefits and setup guide to this adapter, here's something important for any of you PAL console owners. I'm sure this will help you towards getting the most out of this adapter. PAL console owners is shown on this map that I picked up on the interwebs, showing you the regions of where PAL consoles were sold but for most of my viewers here would have been from the regions of UK, EU and Australia. All the GameCube games released in these zones did not have the option for the game to be set to a progressive mode, where the GameCube's 480p progressive signal output is the highest quality in video that it can provide. So this is a big shame for the guys in these regions. But there is a workaround which I'll show you soon in this video. But just for an example purpose, a lot of these titles released in the US and Japan region gave you the option to activate 480p. I'll provide you with a compatible list in the description box below, but in short, a majority of the titles released in the NTSC regions were compatible to have this video output. But of course, this wasn't a out of the box experience for the guys over in US and Japan for the NTSC regions with the original video cable that it came with, the popular composite yellow, white and red. Nintendo did release an official component cable in which we used back in the day to get higher resolution on HD TVs, which they have always been expensive and especially these days there's no chance of picking one up, unless you're willing to splurge. In order to enable progressive scan mode with an NTSC game, the B button must be held down as a compatible game boots. Another fact to consider is that TVs these days won't even have a component input, just HDMIs, including my own TV. So the GameCube DVI to HDMI adapters that are out is just a lot more convenient. Oh, and yes, I am aware that you can play GameCube games natively on a Nintendo Wii and a Nintendo Wii U. Well, hacked or modded for the Wii U, but playing them on the original GameCube does have its benefits, which I'll leave for another video in the future. Now the answer for PAL console owners is to simply modify your console to get the best out of this adapter. The method I recommend is the Save Game Exploit SD Card Pro adapter which I have covered a video on how to go around doing this yourself. 
If you'd like to check that out, I'll put that in the description as well. Just in simple terms with this method, you can then back up your original discs and play them on an SD card and using the Swiss OS, where you then can able to run your games and force them in a progressive mode, getting this 480p. Brilliant, now that's out of the way, let's hook this up and see what this fella can do with a straight out of the box experience. Eight out of the box experience could be all that you need to get this up and running on your HD TV. But now let's show you what it's like with some added tweaks. So to do this, let's first learn about its options and its features that this adapter provides. Now the output from the GameCube is stating to be a DVI output, which is great and it stands for a digital visual interface, a connection that came out after the VGA cable, if you can remember that, but before the HDMI. So that means this output has a digital signal that can carry that signal to your digital TV speaking the same language. So that has a lot less workaround that you would find with an analog signal, which you will find from a VGA or a component cable, which is very common for consoles released in this era. So this has created better opportunities for adapters like this Retro Plus that have less noise flickering or any output video lag. Another plus with the GameCube DVI, unlike the original DVI connection that came out, this one carries the audio signal as well. So let's check out some of these options that you can navigate through with your remote. There's quite a bit to get through, but I'll just brush up on through of these important ones. We got scanline options for you who are fans to imitate the visuals that you had back in the day with your original CRT TV. Personally, I'm just not a fan of that. But for those who are, you do have a really good tinkering set of options and you can even set them to different profiles. You can boost up the luminance and adjust the strength factor. With the full custom set to off, you can then even adjust more settings. With picture settings, this gives you the option to adjust the brightness, contrast and saturation. Not sure how to enable the picture position yet. I personally do like to boost up the saturation just a little bit. This is handy so then you don't have to adjust any settings already preset to your TV profile. So this will just be for your GameCube video output. Remember to hit that save and exit to save your settings. The OSD settings in the menu is the self pop-up menu and you can adjust the transparency and the color which is a nice little feature. I'm going to go with the purple just to match my GameCube. Over to the output settings, we do have allow for ATP mode. Now this determines if the G video output does have a signal presence of a progressive mode to be automatic. So I find this really handy because my capture card would not recognize the 480 interlace. So when this natively has the 480p mode automatically, it will then be able to capture the video. RGB limited range determines if this GC video outputs a limited range with that set on or a full range is selected off. This option may be disabled if you turn on the YCBCR color range. For me personally, I do use the RGB and slightly raise the brightness. But for your setup, this can be different depending on the type of TV or the settings you have already applied on your TV. Enhanced DVI mode is something I'm not familiar with, but it's to do with something with the audio traveling through this adapter. So I haven't experienced anything different with this on or off. It may be to do with something with the audio output coming through this adapter. With that off, you could then probably use the analog output and then connect that to a stereo system or anything of your preference. Display as 16x9 won't change it to 16x9 to a widescreen ratio, but it will tell your display signal output coming from this adapter to be shown as a 16x9 aspect ratio. This will help some display or some scalers to respect the settings in case you have any problems along this way. You also have the volume settings, so you can boost that or even decrease that with just this remote, which is pretty handy, or even just mute it. View all modes will give you the different resolutions that when the console outputs that selected resolutions, for instance, the 240p mode, which you will find when you're using your GBA adapter playing your original Game Boy games. You can have a line doubler mode, meaning the resolution will double from 240p to 480p. Now this is handy for captured devices and other attachments or even your TV that can only accept a 480p signal as its lowest resolution. 
Over to advanced settings, we got chroma interpolation, which is something I am new to. This is on by default. If it is turned off, the output apparently changes the image to have a slight color shift, as well as a stronger pixelation on the color transitions. Something I can't really see myself at the moment. Fix sync timing is on by default. It's only available when fixed resolution is turned on. I'll go on about fixed resolution soon in this video. It does modify the timing of the sync signal to be a standard compliant, so you might as well just leave that on anyway. Regenerate C-Sync is off by default and is only relevant for hardware with an analog output. With it on, it would include the Y for YPPPR or G for the RGB to pass through from the console while the line doubler is off. Basically, depending on your TV, you may get results with a distortion on the top of the picture. So it's good to check this option if you come across this issue. Report 240p as 480i again may have its usage for capturing cards or TVs that can accept the 240p signal. This is a rare circumstance and only Game Boy games if you use the adapter do have that output, so this is just for rare circumstances. Sample rate hack is to do with the audio frequency output, which can be useful for compatibility with any external speaker setup. And always remember to store your settings when you are ready. Now knowing there are a couple of these adapters out there that carry the same software, some clones in other hardware can cause problems with official updates. Now let's check the version that I have with this adapter, and mine is at version 3.0e. But check on the official webpage, we got a version 3.1. Now, you may be no such of a rush to update this as there's not much real need. But this version 3.1 does have improved compatibility with some Samsung TVs, fix some 16x9 issues, squashed out some bugs and crop in any 486 to 480 for the GBI. To update yours, you first must have your console hack to run the Swiss OS. I recommend the Save Game SD Card Pro method. If you are looking to hack your own to run Swiss, then I have created a video on how to do this. You will find a video link in the description box below. So with that, get your SD card that you use with your hacked GameCube with Swiss OS and download this update 3.1 doll file. Place that onto your root of your SD card. Place that then back into your console, boot it up and locate this file, and then hit A. Apologies for the video quality here. Now press the menu button on the remote and head back to about the update firmware. Now I'll just press OK on the remote and this is where it takes a couple of minutes. Then when that is done, just the console will reboot. So now let's check out the firmware and we're all good with our new 3.1 version. Now, as stated earlier, to get more out of this adapter by using Swiss, you can force your titles to run in 480p mode, especially for your power owners. A handful of titles also use a widescreen mode selected in their options, but with Swiss, you can force titles to run in widescreen. But I do recommend using the cheat code method as this has better compatibility. Now with all that set up, let's hook up the M Classic. And we're off. Again, here is another quick comparison with F-Zero. First using that cheap composite to HDMI adapter with the standard 4x3 ratio in a 480i. Now we have the Retro Plus adapter using the 480p mode with the widescreen feature. Side by side, you can really tell the difference with the Retro Plus given that better clarity, color balance and sharpness. And lastly, here's the Retro Plus full screen and now again with the M Classic attached. So guys, this would not be available to us if it wasn't for the original contributors of this open source project. I only managed to track down a guy called Ingo Corp. But thanks to him and the others that were behind this, I'd love to hear your recommendation and setup guide for your beloved and not forgotten GameCube. Obviously, there's more to cover and let me know what I've missed out. 
that was always if you like this video hit that button if you want to support this channel click subscribe you leave your comments below and i catch you a lot hopefully on the next video